Okay, I've got a challenge. Now we're in a dead heat. We got Barack and Biden over here, and we have John and Sarah on the other side, vying for president and vice president of the United States of America. And we are divided as a nation, which is fine. I mean, this is just the way the system works. We are divided. We fight it out, and the winner wins, just like with the mixed martial art. You know, we are. We do love a good fight, don't we? I mean, we don't even, I mean, of course we would like our own particular hero or champion to be like 20, you know, points ahead, you know, and to, to, to just sail right into the Oval Office. But the reality, that wouldn't be interesting. That'd be great for the winning side, I suppose. But we do like a good fight. Come on now. Um, I just finished watching a tough man contest today on television. It may have been a repeat, but... And the, and the two champions ended up fighting out to the end, and it was a split decision, and you know, and they had to give the fight to somebody. Of course, there was a winner, and he was happy. <laughs> but the loser, he wasn't happy, okay? But they were both pretty good sports. Tried, they knew it was close. But we like, a, we like a good fight. We like a close fight. I don't know what it is. It must be that animal nature in us. So that's what we're dealing with with these two, with these two folks, Barack and, and John McCain. And we're looking at them as they're going to satisfy our situation. Our nation is kind of jacked up, you know, in every way, you know. People are suffering on every, and every, every level of this economic spectrum, I guess, unless you're in the upper class part of the spectrum. But we're suffering. We're jacked up. And, and if we're not suffering financially, as a whole, we know that, that in the world's eyes, you know, we have lost stature, you know, we have lost respect, you know, the respect that we once held. And so we are kind of jacked up in pretty much every way, and we're looking for the, the, the winner to satisfy us. No, John McCain can do it. No, Barack can do it. You know, we're, we're going to be really jacked up if Barack becomes president, or we're going to be really jacked up, if, you know, eight more years of the same if McCain becomes president. You know, we have all these little sayings, so our guy will win, but the reality is we're looking at these guys to save us. And what I'm suggesting today is, no matter who wins, they can't save us, okay? They, they can only save us if we begin to save ourselves. See, see, we're looking for a champion to, to fix our situation, but we are the ones, we the people are the ones that have to fix the situation. It doesn't matter who gets in office, if we don't take the initiative to do what needs to be done, it's not going to get done, okay? I remember years ago I was in this network marketing business, and, and, and I was pretty good at it. I mean, I moved up the ranks. I had never done one before. Somebody showed me this little, this little diagram, you know, what you need to do, and I did it. And I had moved up there, and I was going toward the top of the pyramid. I guess it wasn't a pyramid, you know, technically. But, but you needed people in your organization in order to grow. And, and a lot of people that, that I knew just didn't have the money, the investment to get in. So what I would do is, you know, I recognized what I could do in this business, so I helped people get in financially. You know, if, if you just work this business, I'll go ahead and pay your way in because I know that in the long run it'll pay off for me and I'll, I'll get back more money than I invested just to bring you in. And, and I did that on, on more than a few occasions. But you know what I found in that? <laughs> what I found is the people that had the least success in their business were the people that I paid their way to get into the business. And, and what I learned from that is when, there, when you're, there is no sacrifice, there's, there's the, you don't really own the situation. There's no real commitment to the situation at hand. So, so I would go into impoverished neighborhoods and I would find maybe a woman in there that's trying to survive doing hair, you know, or whatever in her community. So I figured this woman will be really motivated. So I'd pay her way in and she did nothing. And this happened time and time again until I finally realized, unless you invest a piece of yourself, unless it costs you, you, you won't really be dedicated or committed to the situation. And so what I'm suggesting here in the same token is, is just that. If we're looking for Barack to save our country, if we're looking for McCain to save our country, it's not going to happen whoever steps into the Oval Office if we ourselves are not committed. And we're not. I'm telling you, this is why we are in the situation we're in today, because we haven't been committed. 
We can't, you know, we can blame this on the government, you know, and, and, and we really can because they have taken advantage of the situation these past eight years and done what they wanted to do, but we let them do it. <laughs> All right. They, they couldn't, in a country such as ours, if the masses had risen up and said, no, whatever that we're talking about, whatever situation said, no, it's not going to be this way, it wouldn't have been that way. Even the Iraq war, you remember the, the lengths that the administration went to to convince us that this was the right thing to do. I'm telling you, unless they have the go-ahead from the masses of the people, they're not going to do it. So the situation that we're in today, we have allowed this to happen. Because we have put all of our trust. You seen that little advertisement, you know, uh, that little interview that Britney Spears did? <laughs> it doesn't matter what our president wants to do. Just let him do it. He's our president, you know. I mean, as ridiculous as that sounds, basically that's what we've done. And that's why we're in the mess that we're in today. No other reason. Because we don't care. As long as our finances are right, as long as we got money in our pocket, we don't care how things are done. We don't care why things are done. We don't care what things are done as long as we're doing okay. And that's the reality. And, and the reason we're tripping now is because our gasoline prices are up. Our food prices are up. The war is beginning to take a real economic and an emotional toll on and physical toll on us. So now we're sitting there reaping all this stuff. And now we're, we're fed up with our government. We've got like the lowest approval rating in 200 years. You know what I'm saying? No, we need to recognize it's us. We've done this. I'm a minister, I'm a community minister in the inner cities and and in the jails, you know, in the jails and, and this, this situation and the uh, the alternative schools and, and, and that particular community. And what I recognize even in those situations is sort of on a smaller scale of what we've allowed to happen with our country. So what we do in our neighborhoods, you know, we have a murder or something and all the ministers get together and we march downtown, okay? And that's all well and good, but what is that doing? We, we need to recognize that we have created the situation that we see. Marching isn't going to do it. See, marching was all well and good during the civil rights movement when the enemy was, you know, the white man and the white man's attitudes and as well the black man and the black man's attitudes. Their attitudes were different, but, but both the Caucasians and the African Americans, their mindsets were, had created the situation that was kind of jacked up. And this is what the marching was about. It was, it was challenging the status quo. It was, it was challenging the oppressive leadership and, and the depressed mindsets of those that were oppressed. And, and it, was, it, was pitting, it was pitting the oppression and the heavy-handedness of those who wanted to stay, things to stay the way they were to, to the hearts of the people of America watching the atrocities you know, happen to those who were marching peacefully and, and in the course of time it worked. But see, today we have a different kind of enemy. It's not the oppressive individual out there. It's the enemy within. We are creating these situations. So we have a murder and we march. What does that do? Nothing. We have prayer vigils. What does that do? Nothing. We need to begin to realize that the problem is us, the church even. I was discussing with a particular pastor friend of mine recently about an article he read about a gentleman that wrote about, he was talking about the, the preachers that we see, the very popular celebrity preachers that we see on television that are millionaires and multi-millionaires. And, and the message that we as ministers have been preaching even for the past 10 to 15 years, the prosperity message, how God wants you to be rich. This is the message, this is the example that we've been to the generations that, that have come up under us. They, they've seen our gods, they've seen the things that we gravitate toward, the things that are most important to us is about making money, okay? And the young people, they've simply embraced that same ideology with simply a different way to do it, okay? So, so they see, and these, these young people aren't dumb. The young people are entrepreneurs just like the rest of us. Young people are intelligent just like we are probably a little bit more intelligent because we've sort of given in and been lulled into a sort of semi-consciousness in, in, in what we've been experiencing. But they see. They see the preacher. Man, look at that scam he's got going. 
They see the preacher, look at the, what do they call it? You know, the racket he's got going. You know, this is a man standing up before, you know, a, a hundred people maybe in the community or 500 people or a thousand or, or you know, 20,000, the guys that we see on television, they're getting all these people to give them their money. Man, that's a heck of a, a, heck of a racket. I saw a guy, a minister, uh, the other day on television, you know, just telling people, you know, if you, the reason you're financing.